of the things that I've been meaning to organize for a while is my sewing box. I finally got a really nice little wooden one that had all these different compartments and I love compartments. I like being able to have a place for certain categories and at the moment my sewing box system is having two different boxes. This one which has all the threads and then a little needle cushion and the other one has things like the embroidery scissors, the embroidery hoop, scissors, needles, measuring tape, all the kind of stuff that you normally find in a sewing box. But it just doesn't make sense to me to have it in two different boxes. It's annoying as anything and it's not very convenient and also frankly this box just looks a hundred times better. So today I want to organize it, declutter and try and make something which is a lot more efficient and much prettier. To start off with all the larger tools like the scissors and then the belt hole maker they're all going to go at the bottom later on I am going to add a few more things but I try never to overthink things at the beginning I just try stuff out see if it works and then I need to move it then I do and just like that the bottom of that sewing box is empty I've still got to deal with the safety pins and the needles but one thing at a time When I first started going through all the boxes I thought I wouldn't be decluttering that much and then I realized I had something like 12 thimbles. I rarely rarely use thimbles, there's maybe three of them that I use that I really like, the rest of them I don't even know why I have them. To be honest some of them did come in a kit when I bought these little rubber ones which are fantastic for things like leather work or if there's something that you need to move a little bit and the metal ones they can be quite slippery. They're really good but they also sent me loads of different sizes so I picked out the two that I needed and used used and then the rest are just going to go into a box to give away to friends or to just pop up on Facebook marketplace and see who wants them. I also kept moving things in between tiers. The idea is, is that the middle tier would have all the embroidery stuff and then the top one would have things like the measuring tape, but things kept moving around until they seemed to fit perfectly. The one thing I did know in advance was going to be quite a brutal cull was all the threads. The ones that come on the small plastic spools are garbage, I hate them. They came in a very cheap little kit that I must have bought about eight years ago. They snap, they crack, they have awful little lumps in the thread that then won't go through the needle eye. They're just garbage. I won't even be giving them away to friends because they're just awful. They just need to be thrown in the bin. However, the smaller ones, which come on the little cardboard spools, sorry, I think it's the word spool. Um, I think that's the right word. I could be wrong. Those are very, very nice. Are they the best quality thread? No, but they work just fine. And I have the more expensive threads, the Gutterman ones, the white and the black one underneath. Those are the kind of threads that I use a lot. The colored threads I don't use quite as much. But when it came to the needles, I knew that I wanted to have a little needle holder like what I had in the floral sewing box. But I didn't want to take off the needle holder that was in there because then it would ruin it. And I wanted to be able to give it away to someone who could use it or would want it. And if I took that off, it would damage it. Hardly anyone's going to want a damaged sewing box, so I thought I would make something instead. I used the little glass pot that I used to hold all the spare buttons, cut out a piece of cardboard twice. Once isn't really thick enough, it's just going to bend and warp. If you cut out two layers, especially if it's on cold pressed cardboard, not the corrugated stuff, it's going to be much tougher. I was a little bit too happy about this DIY because I had, well, my husband had a really beautiful merino wool jumper that got completely destroyed by the same moths that ate my scarf. But where I was able to save my scarf and embroider over them, there was nothing I could do with this because it was a knitted fabric. I just didn't have the skills or the tools to be able to fix it. So I'd been saving it because I didn't want to chuck it. I was sure that I could use it and today I finally got to use it. So I cut out two pieces of the sleeve and one thing you're going to need to do at first is you're going to need to cut up loads of little bits. So just cut a few lines in it and then just cut in all directions until you get loads of little bits. I kept cutting until I had about a handful of the things. You're not really going to need much more unless you're making a really giant pin cushion, in which case go ahead. If you don't want to use little pieces of fabric on the inside because it can be a little bit irregular, you will get little bumps and areas which aren't as tight as others. You could also use cotton balls inside as well. That is going to be much softer and it is going to look a little bit more perfect, but as it is, I love this as it was. So this is what I did. I popped them on top of the cardboard, 
pulled that cloth all around it so that those cut up pieces are inside and then you want to just take an elastic band and wrap that round. The trickier part is going to be gluing everything down because obviously you can't stick it like this onto the sewing box. I mean, you could, you could make it look like a little squid so that it looks like the squid is stuck onto the inside of the sewing box, but that wasn't something that was important enough to me <laughs> to spend the time doing. So I just wanted to make something that looked more like a traditional pin cushion. And of course, I'm going to be using my trusty glue gun. What you want to do is hold a small piece on the side, cut in front of it, put a blob of glue, and then try and use something to press it down. You could use your fingers, but it will hurt like hell. Instead, maybe use a fork or a spoon. In my case, I'm going to be using one of the larger leather needles that I have. Press that down over the glue until the cloth and the glue have dried and cooled down and you know it's not going to go anywhere, and then continue that entire process around the rest of the pincushion. Towards the end of it, it did start to look a little bit interesting underneath, but I figured the important thing is to make sure that everything is glued down and once it's stuck down, no one's going to be able to see the bottom. I could have used something like super glue, but I don't like what super glue does if you ever need to take it off. It does tend to rip out chunks of whatever it's stuck to. Glue guns don't really do that. They tend to come off quite nice and neatly. So I want to give myself the option of changing my idea of how I want the sewing box to be arranged in the future, just in case. So I glued that down and there it is. It's nice and solid. And now I can start organizing the needles. And just like the threads, once I started organizing these, I realized I have way too many needles. I have a few favorites that I regularly use and then I must have what a hundred spares. I don't need a hundred spare needles. Why do I have this many needles? So what I started doing is laying them out on the table and organizing them in categories so that I could see exactly what I have, whether I have leather needles, curved needles, embroidery needles, putting them in all the different categories and then picking out the ones I know that I regularly use with a few spares. As it is with this little kit that I have, I've also got that spare box of needles and sewing needles in those little plastic boxes. So I know that I'm covered and every time I had this irrational fear of, oh, what if I need one? I just looked at the box and thought, Claire, you've got 40 other ones. You're, you know, unless you're snapping a needle a day, you're going to be fine. So these are the needles that I ended up keeping. And all that is the needles that I ended up giving away because there was no way I was ever going to use them. So that felt better. And it was a little bit horrifying realizing just how much stuff I had that I just didn't use and someone else could. So that's all going in the donation box. The next thing to organize was the ball headed needles. I had this beautiful little tin that looks like a cassette and I'd been saving it for a few things. It originally used to hold all my SD cards for filming and editing and stuff like that. But I want to be able to look at it a bit more because it makes me happy. So I decided to use that instead of the cushion. As cute as the cushion looks, it doesn't actually fit inside the sewing box and it's a little bit of a faff. I kind of prefer things in a tin. So this is also going in the donation pile. And at some point I might make a smaller one that looks like a tomato that will actually fit in my sewing box. But for the moment, it's not high on my list of priorities. So I just want to put them in this tin. I'm gonna put sellotape over the name so that it doesn't rub away. And now I'm going to make a magnetic panel. I had thought about using the watercolor palette that I had left over that I butchered for my Ottoman video. But in the end, what I decided to do was use this little strip of leather that I have. My mother works with leather a lot. She does leather carving, she makes bags, she makes book covers from it. And as a result, she has quite a few strips of leather, which are just scraps and are no use to her. So every time I see a big piece that I think I can use, I grab that and today I'm finally getting to use it. I especially like this because it meant that anything metal, which was on it and being held by the magnets, wouldn't get scratched. It was a nice soft surface. So I made sure that it fit inside the lid where I wanted it and then marked out where I thought I would put the magnets. These magnets, I have no idea where my husband got them, but when he was decluttering his study, he found them and asked me if I could use them. I'd already used quite a few for the Ottoman vanity that I'm working on, but I've still got quite a few left. So I thought, great, let's use these on the sewing box. I still have a few other projects I have planned with them, so I am trying to ration them. But 
these were perfect for what I needed. It stuck beautifully onto the inside of the lid and then that little tin just snapped right on top of it. last thing I had to tackle was a big glass pot I have of buttons. There's some very beautiful ones but the only ones I ended up keeping were the ones which I knew were my husband's. He's got a jacket that he really really loves and every so often he does lose a button on it so I'm keeping those because I know that I'm very likely to use them. Putting them in a small little plastic bag and then the rest of these buttons as beautiful as they are I have no use for them so I'm thinking I'm just going to put them in the donate pile because I know someone's going to want them they're beautiful but they no longer have any use or purpose for me. And then I think almost two hours later, I was finally done. On the very top tier, what I did is I had some threads, the needles. On the opposite tier, I have my embroidery scissors, the needles, all the various bits and bobs like the safety pins and spare needles and thimbles. At the very bottom here, I have my Gutemann threads and then some spare elastic band. On the opposite side, I have my tailor's chalk and the embroidery hoop. And then at the very bottom, I have things like the awl, the belt hole maker and the scissors. At some point, I might go through this again and just have a look at it one more time. It's amazing what slips through in the first declutter. But so far, I am very, very happy with it. I have a smaller setup. I no longer have two boxes. Instead, it all fits in this beautiful little wooden one. And I think everything is a lot more organized and definitely looks much prettier. If you like my content and want to follow me on Patreon, that's where you can find my early content, extra content and see the thought process behind things like my books, cover designs, videos and artwork. You can also find me on Instagram, but the best place to follow me and make sure that all my new content is sent directly to you is through my website and the mailing list. On the top right hand corner you put your name, the email you want your new content to be sent to, and that's it. You're done. Mm -hmm.